say when you wear Black Power Media gear, you can accomplish anything. You play any and every position. Coaching, to kicking, to receiving, to running and juking. And, oh, my goodness. Let's see that again in slow motion. Get off me. Ah. And you're going to have a lot of haters coming at you. But what you got to do is you got to shake them off. Shake them off and get to your goal and accomplish it. And when that's done, it's a beautiful thing. I'm talking about going hard, extra, for that extra point. And when it's done beautifully, you're talking about touchdown. Oh, and the crowd goes wild and they're celebrating with you and everything. Man, let's see that again. Nice. Black Power Media, baby. That's how we do it. Now go to blackpowermedia.org and get you some of that gear. Power yourself today. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. What it do? What it do? What's happening? What's good? What's good? Welcome everybody to Gorilla Intellectuals University right here at BPM. Kalanji Jamachanga, Jared Ball. Doctors James and Jones in the background handling the people's business. Everybody will be back eventually. What's good, my man? How you feeling this morning? Man, I'm alive on arrival. Still fighting for survival. You know what right I mean? On. We here. Right on. We here. Feeling like Fanon this morning, you know? Good dose. You know, that early morning Monday. Man. Yeah, I was it's reading like late last night, early this morning. It is 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 not good before bed, but good for rising in the morning. I probably, probably, you know, yeah, yeah. get too amped going to going to sleep. It's not good for going to sleep that amp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, and that that's that's real. I mean, but it, it's a beautiful thing though. And yeah. and I appreciate um the fact that we're going over this thing again because it's necessary. And I'm encouraging folks, you know, don't just listen to what we're talking about. Go back. If you haven't read it, Wretched of the Earth, we're on chapter three right now. And uh, I, I would say it's an important chapter, but I think all of the chapters are important. Yeah. You know, but, um, yeah. you know, I'm looking forward to doing more of this. Um, oh, absolutely. I think this has been great. And I and I think even if you've read it before, I mean, rereading it again uh, with a different frame of mind, a little older uh, yes. for me has been it's been mind blowing. It's been great yes. um, now. To your credit, and oh. I, you know, I do want to ask you about your weekend, but I just want to, just so we're clear, taking care of the business first thing. Uh, to your credit, you just had a really good idea for 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 the direction of the program over the next couple of weeks. So we are going to take a break next week with Fanon and come back to Chapter Four the following week and do like a a Fanon May Day Labor Day anti colonial Labor Day extravaganza. But next week. Yes. My man, you had a great idea. So let's let's let folks know what we're gonna we're gonna put together for next Monday. No doubt. So next week, 69 year born date for our main man, Mumia Abu Jamal. So we're gonna be commemorating and celebrating his born date right here, live and direct, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Gorilla Intellectual University. Um, we're just no one even knows. You're the first to know officially. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Mumia's <laughs> committee doesn't even know. <laughs> Me and don't know. We just bogarted and said it's going down. Right it's a here. happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> what you going to do about you it? You know what you going to do? The gorilla intellectual himself is going to get celebrated on GIU. So no so whether, whether he like it or not. Hey, man. <laughs> we, we're going to be like, happy birthday. Right. But anyway, <laughs> no, no doubt. No doubt. So, um, on the real, we, we will, you know, as in the past, for those, for those of you who are new to our platform, we've had Mumia on here live and direct probably about three or four times yeah. already. And, um, you know, and you never know. Hey, I mean, you never know. That's why we, you got to stay tuned. We bring tuned. guests on here. I mean, get you twisted. <laughs> folks, stop, dudes. Some people be hating. They be act like, we ain't got no clout. Y'all better stop playing with us. They you also know, hate the other side, though. They're like, well, you had that? so-and-so on. Why didn't you have me on? Yeah. You know, it's like, like it, it's, uh, it gets real funny sometimes. It's like, yeah. you know, sometimes yeah. we're not we're not big enough of a platform. And then other times it feels like we're the biggest platform in the world where people are like, you haven't had me on or you made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, oh. Yeah. I, I didn't know you was watching. Yeah, I didn't know. It was that important to you. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I invited some people on in the past. They kind of brushed me off and whatnot. But they came back around. I'm not naming no names. We're not going to do anyone like that today because they redeemed We're themselves. let them all come back. Yeah, we're going to let them all come back yeah. as, as we continue yeah. to grow. And thanks to the remixers who are, who are here live filing in and those who will be here later. As you all help us yeah. continue to grow, we it's going to be a lot of little, for me, some fun and petty moments as people come through later after they, you know. Nature. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> type, type, of, type of malarkey would that be? JB ain't petty. Malarkey. You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with y'all? Oh, man. So anyway, anyway, man, how how was your weekend, man? You ever, uh, uh, anything, anything big popping off down down your way? What, what, what's the word? Man, just, just, just organizing, um, working on different programs and platforms and, you know, knocking kinks out of things. You know what I mean? Getting my weight up. So, yeah. You know, it's um, you know, it's so crazy. I think nowadays when you ask me about anything beyond 24 hours ago, it's like uh, it's cloudy. Yeah, it gets foggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's you know, I'm still here. I'm alive on arrival. So I'm right on. You know. Yeah, so I got to go back I'm and look at my calendar just to, yeah. to find out what I did yesterday. <laughs> For real. What I, For real. what I do yesterday. <laughs> Yo, and, and it's crazy because I mean, it, it's it's literally like that. You know yeah. what I mean? But. That's um I think when you are when you are working and you're moving about, then it's like the days blend together and but we have some we have some phenomenal things coming up. I'm I'm very grateful for a number of opportunities that have uh that have come um our way. So definitely and, and salute to you all again. I know that you mentioned the remixes, the folks in the chat for folks who are unfamiliar with the remixes, the remixes, we call them the remixes because of their dedication to the remix morning show. Um, you know, so, you know, yeah, shout out to the remix. Yeah, absolutely. Right on. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, same thing. Was busy running around all weekend. Uh, uh, had the pleasure of going to uh, Bowie State, uh, the other one of the other HBCUs in Maryland. Okay, okay. Uh and and work with with my with my folks at the the uh, uh African Psychology Students Association. Uh and the presentation the invention of the black athlete is on the site. Uh so sure. folks could check that out. Um I did uh unfortunately I had to miss everything else though. So I had to I got to go back like I'm sure some others have to do and and I got to watch I missed Sundays last night. I missed Warrior Class on Saturday. I missed oh, yeah. Jackie Show Friday. My I was just and 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 just sh chauffeur, uh, uh, you know, daddy chauffeur, and 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 you know all of that. Like the, you know, just took me out the the BPM box, for, um, except for a couple hours yesterday where we we did mm. get to put together an impromptu discussion about all of the strikes happening at universities around the country, um, okay. and talk a little bit about the 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 non guerrilla intellectual experience. At, on the academic uh, campuses, you know, universities around the, around the country. So uh, exactly. folks can check that out as well. But uh, you know what? Speak, yeah. speak, uh, speaking of um, universities, I got a plug. Uh, UC Riverside. Um, right on. And, and our, our guy, Dylan Rodriguez out there. Yes. Yeah. He had um, uh, Dr. Joy James and I um, on virtually, along with three other powerful uh, sisters. We happen to be PhD candidates. Um, so if you all missed that, we actually loaded it on the platform, uh, I believe a few days ago, Thursday, Wednesday, something like that. But you can check it out on um, yeah, in the Gorilla Intellectual University um, playlist. Playlist, yeah. Yeah, it was a tribute or commemoration to um, the assassinations of Lil Bobby Hutton and also MLK. You know, so I think... Um, I think we, you know, delivered some nice, you know, nuggets and punches and whatnot. So definitely go back and check that out if you have the opportunity. I almost forgot about it, but yeah, definitely. A lot, because y'all be doing, there's a lot going on. Yeah, and shout Ooh. out to Dylan Rodriguez, who was also involved in some of those strike efforts as well uh, out yes. there, you know. Yes. So uh, uh, real good dude, real good dude. Um, yeah, y'all make me proud, man, to... um. You know, to to see folk, I, I I was anti academy for years. I ain't even going front, but I'm glad to see you know there are folks who are who are digging, and 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 really living up to what it is that 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 
that's supposed to be done. No, man, I admit, look, I admit some defensiveness around it. And I get it that that if you're not in the academy, I get how it's projected outwardly. But right. but the reality right. is, it's just like everything else. If 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 the popular projection of whatever is yes. is your dominant experience with something is probably not the most accurate. And it's just like right. with everything else. There are, you know, a lot of good people in academia who are just. Right. erased and suppressed yeah. underneath this this famous form they keep dropping on CNN every day but yeah. but the flip side is that we're doing it in institutions that are designed to produce the opposite so they're right. designed to produce what what most people yourself included are rightly critical of so right. it's just a um but yeah we in there man there's a few of us yeah. left in there yeah. trying yeah, yeah, to do yeah, good yeah, work yeah man. yeah and, and for clarity for me my 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 situation, my disdain didn't come from the fact that, oh, you're an academy, you think you know something. Mm -hmm. My disdain came from years of being on platforms mm -hmm. and panels and and dealing with these folks live and direct. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it just so happens that um mm -hmm. I, I, I've been the, the bad guy, the good guys. So whenever mm -hmm. they want some type of shakeup. They'll invite me to certain universities, be it mm -hmm. Ivy League, HBCUs, whatever. Slap me on a panel who we know with someone that they know is the the polar opposite, acceptable and careful and a safe. A absolutely, <laughs> and then you know they would attempt to um, dismantle yeah. um, you know our analysis, and you know, and and I'm grateful to say it didn't didn't usually work out too well because you know it, it's it's nothing like you know, on the ground experience or learning from the folks who did it, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, cats deal with us from a, an angle that, you know, that, that we all got our knowledge the same way. You know what I'm saying? So I think that one thing that I appreciate about BPM in particular is that we have the opportunity to continue to learn from folks who still exist, uh, veteran um, freedom fighters, and also folks who are, political prisoners past and current you know so we don't have to no one has to speculate you can get that information live and direct so right definitely on. shout out to all the, the folks who've contributed to uh making sure that we keep in the movement moving over here right on all right so you ready you want to you want to you want to move us you want to uh, ceremonial uh, introduction yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. uh yeah. Okay. and then okay. let's get into this okay so again welcome to uh, for this station identification, we are broadcasting from Black Power Media, BPM, um, and this platform, this particular show today is Guerrilla Intellectual University, and for those of you who tapped in late, Guerrilla Intellectual University is a uh, program facilitated by Dr. Jared Ball, Dr. Janine Jones, Dr. Joy James, and yours truly, uh, the People's PhD. That's right. Which I, I accept that, Kalanji Changa. Um, and it is an effort and an attempt for us to make sure that we have that political education popping. So we've gone through chapters one and two of um, The Wretched of the Earth by France Fanon. Last week, we did chapter two along with uh, a review of the Battle of Algiers. So if you're just tuning in, definitely tap back into those particular programs. Also, um, I did an interview last year with uh, Muriel uh, Fanon, which is the daughter of France Fanon. Make sure you check that out as well. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to chapter three, Wretched at Earth. Um, quick summary, chapter three of France Fanon's book, Wretched at Earth, is a powerful and thought-provoking exploration of the psychological effects of colonialism on the colonized people. Fanon argues that colonialism is not just a political and economic system, but also a deeply ingrained psychological one that shapes the way colonized people see themselves and their place in the world. One of the key themes of this chapter is decolonization of the mind. Fanon argues that the colonized people have internalized the value and beliefs of the colonizer and that this has led to a profound sense of inferiority and self-hatred. He writes, the colonized man is an envious man, and it is because of this envy that the colonized intellectual will try to surpass the achievements of the colonizers in spheres where the colonizer is not or is no longer so competent, which will include literature, the arts and sports. Fanon also explores 
the ways in which colonialism has created a sense of fragmentation and dislocation amongst the colonized people. He argues that colon colonialism has disrupted traditional social structures and created a sense of rootlessness and alienation. This has led to a sense of despair and hopelessness amongst the colonized people who feel that they have lost their sense of identity and purpose. Another important theme of the chapter is the idea of violence as a means of resistance. Fanon argues that violence is a necessary and inevitable part of the struggle for decolonization. He writes, violence is a cleansing force. It frees the native from his inferiority complex and from his despair and inaction. It makes him fearless and restores his self-respect. Overall, chapter three of Wretched of the Earth is a powerful um, uh, piece. Uh, it is a way that 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 Fanon kind of breaks down what is uh, what are some of the um, what would I call them mirages in revolution? Because I think mm -hmm. that one of the issues that we have, particularly for African and colonized people, is that we feel we we look at revolution from a um, from some type of I don't know utopian type way we look at revolution like it's just you know it's going to be this fight and 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 we're going to win and everything's good you know power to the people it doesn't go like that most people don't think past the victory you know what i'm yeah. saying and some people don't even believe that we can win so i think that that's one of the um the, the pieces that i got from this uh this chapter what say you dr jared ball no i appreciate that uh so the for me the the I guess the simple summary is is the is that Fanon is struggling in this chapter to to get us to struggle with, as you put it, describe the difficulties of uh, of the decolonial process beyond just the fantasy and the mythology. So in other words, this is this is he's saying this is after the 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 armed struggle. This chapter right. is sort of like after the armed struggle. Cool, the right. French are gone. Now what? Right. And the first thing he starts. So so and in bulk of the chapter is him dealing with the contradiction of of the new ruling elite and the the narrowness, the, the shortcomings of the nationalism uh, that got us past the French. You know, so it's like the, the necessary nationalism that gets you to fight the colonial struggle then becomes a problem uh, or presents new problems that have to be dealt with. So this is what the chapter is all about now. And it begins, I'm going to share this here. Like I keep going back and forth on this first paragraph and I really even struggle with, I'm not always entirely sure I get his meaning on everything. Mm. Um, and I, and I don't remember, we, you know, and I'm, and I haven't gone back to read ahead yet. So I have, I don't remember in detail where he goes with this particular point I'm going to raise right here. But as he starts this chapter off, History teaches us that the anti-colonialist struggle is not automatically written from a nationalist perspective. I just think, on some levels, I think that's a brilliant and beautiful way to open the chapter. But on another way, I'm like, I'm not entirely sure I understand what he's saying. So, mm. um, in other words, is he saying that uh, the nationalist perspective, as I think he's saying, is, is insufficient? Uh, and we need to develop what I'm not sure he's saying, and uh, uh, what, but what I think he is from reading his other works and just going from memory, uh, that we need to develop an internationalist pan-African perspective, something beyond the nationalist perspective. So as he continues here in this first paragraph, over a long period of time, the colonized have devoted their energy to eliminating inequ inequities such as forced labor, corporal punishment, unequal wages, and the restriction of political rights. This fight for democracy against man's oppression gradually emerges from a universalist neoliberal confusion to arrive sometimes laboriously at a demand for nationhood. So again, I struggle with that phrase too. Mm -hmm. So he's saying the goal here is democracy, uh, but the Eurocentric, universalist, and neoliberal imposed confusion is what limits us to this concept, narrow concept of nationhood. Is it, it, I right. think that's what he's saying. And then lastly, yeah. I'll just stop here. The, the, but the unpreparedness of the elite, the lack of practical ties between them and the masses, their apathy, and yes, their cowardice at the crucial moment in the struggle are the cause of tragic trials and tribulations. So... 
and he, so he's setting up. So it's a lot done in that first paragraph, and he's setting right. up the the, right. the the rest of the chapter. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, I see it is just the um, you know, I, I look at narrow nationalism, mm -hmm. right? And I think that one of the things that we do, unfortunately, and I think that's kind of what, kind of what he tackles in this chapter, is that we look at nationhood through our colonizers lenses because we don't right. it, it's sort of like what asada said on that on that uh that common piece she said you asking me about freedom you asking me about freedom she said that there's um uh i can tell you i don't really know what freedom is but i can tell you what it's not and i think that one of the the errors that we make as as the colonized um even as he jumps into this chapter uh, a little bit more without going ahead, it, it's it's sort of like we replace colonialism with neo-colonialism. So we happy with black faces in high places, right? So I live in Atlanta, okay? There's been a black mayor for over 40 years, okay? That does not, you know, the, the crime hasn't stopped. The cost of living's going up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, Cop city. We're still being so loud. <laughs> cop city is like, you know, the police state. Mm -hmm. Forget cop city. It's like just at a at an all time, you know, high. So it doesn't matter. the The only difference is, as he as he pointed out, um, in that particular piece that you that you read. Uh, matter of fact, what I was talking about in regards to the entertainment. The entertainment, the art, the literature and whatnot, you know, the slaves are, are low to sleep. Everything's cool. It's peace. You know, freak naked is coming back. And, you know, what I mean, it's, you know, forget revolution. Let's talk about this. So I think that from what I'm what I'm gathering um, from Fanon's point is not a, a disdain for nationalism, per se, but um, the narrow space of how we envision nationhood and nationalism. I don't think that we have clarity. I think that we're so caught up in, in, in like I said earlier, in a mirage, mm -hmm. you know, it's idealism. You know, we're not thinking that revolution is bloodshed. We're not thinking that, you know, that, that revolution is, is heartache, is pain, is loss of life. It's, it's loss of property. And then it's uprooting. And then it's how do we beyond that, being able to agree with what a nation would be again you know just to to make it simple we can look at the the, the folks on our platform on bpm imagine if we were in charge of building a nation i would just say the four of us you know kamal the ear doctor you and i it would be a problem you know what i'm saying so we have to have clarity clarity beyond tribalism and and personalities and all that type of stuff so yeah, I, that that's that's how I would see it, man. I'm sorry if I went on a rant. No, I love it. And 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 tomorrow, by the way, just a, another promo. Tomorrow we're continuing this conversation with with William Anderson and and I believe Coco in the second half is going to be jumping on to talk about the 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 nation no map. Um, although I think I keep messing up the title. So so this this but this uh, this concept of the nation and how do we develop it. Uh, and Fernand does a lot in this chapter to address it. And then, of course, I was infuriated at myself to be reminded that I forgot there was a piece in this chapter that I meant to 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 reflect on in, in this this presentation I gave this weekend about colonialism and sport that we're going to come back to it. And I, I was so I was a little bit pissed at myself this morning when I was like, you, even when I make notes, I don't yeah. I, I'm like, damn it, the note is telling you right there. Fanon, yeah. wretched, put it in. And Yo. then I, and I didn't. And then I, I came back to it this morning. It was like, oh. My man, let me yeah. say something, man. I, hey, look, man, folks were <laughs> laughing at me the other day because I posted saying that I did my first ever uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. So, you know, Cats was like throwing darts, like, ah, they also invented, Davey D was like, they invented a device called a cell phone also. It takes pictures you could text. But for me, and, and, and I'm bringing that up because it, with the slides, more than just the notes, it gives you the opportunity because it's on the screen now. 
You know what I'm saying? You can no, see but it my like but 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 my problem would still be I would forget to put the slide in. That's my oh, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, that's no, my no. point. And, and, so and, like and it wouldn't have helped me. me either. Like I'm right. I'm a I, I, <laughs> right, but, but, but for me, it, it's crazy, but the whole slide thing always looked at that as cheating. So oh, no, folks no, always no. yeah, folks always saying like, okay, man, you're good with dates and all that. Because I would try to memorize and internalize so when i get up on a joint because i say i know that some people say well you know it's the visuals and all that stuff mm -hmm. i try to paint a picture so you can understand what's what so mm -hmm. maybe i was taking the hard road but i mean that's well i've I gone was. back i've gone the other way i don't use anything anymore for the most part i don't work um so but whatever you know yeah uh, we, 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 we here it's G.I.G. <laughs> you should have put the phenomenal piece of it. Now, nah, B, you right. I should have. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that dude is funny. Yeah. But so but good. but right on the next page, Fanon does what he 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 tells us what what we need to do, and particularly what those like myself need to do, and what we're doing with this program. Mm -hmm. Um. So he says right here, and it it, it speaks to you know I think of uh, of Newton's revolutionary suicide. He says here in an undeveloped country, the imperative duty of an authentic national bourgeoisie is to betray the vocation to which it is destined to learn from the people and make available to them the intellectual and technical capital it culled from its time in colonial universities. Whoa. You so got to read that part once more. Let's go. Yeah. One more again. One more again. That this is, it's pivotal. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's necessary. Please. When you said, and, and when you said Newton's revolutionary suicide, um, this is how off I am today. I was thinking about uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Newton's theory of uh, <laughs> intercommunalism. Yeah, no, no. no I, I, oh. I, was, I was thinking about oh. the wrong Newton. No, no Isaac Newton is wrong. <laughs> so that's I, funny because I had actually, you know, I once tried to do a Black Agenda commentary saying that we needed to 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 we needed our Newton's laws. Right. That is, to, to, we need Huey's laws to become ours laws and use Newton's, Huey Newton's laws of revolution Without as our, but you're right. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, sorry. But that. anyway, no, it's all good. Fanon said, in an underdeveloped country, so, and whenever, by the way, whenever, as I was rereading this, when I'm, I'm thinking, when I read this, I'm thinking colonized African, I'm thinking black people in the United States, Latinos, indigenous people. But, you know, this is who I'm thinking. It's, and we are the underdeveloped country. In an underdeveloped country, the imperative duty of an authentic national bourgeoisie is to betray the vocation to which it is destined to learn from the people and make available to them the intellectual and technical capital it culled from its time in colonial universities. The other thing I thought of, again, is, is Dr. James. She says... Our role, we have to get resources from intellectual, material, immaterial, whatever, resources from the university back to the people. And Absolutely. and and I even thought it was deep the way Fanon is saying he uses the word destined. So he's saying to me, it's like it's it's a weird choice of word because he's saying you are destined to do this, but you don't have to be. So it's like, well, how is it destiny if you have to if you can betray your destiny? But in other words, he's saying you're on a path, and that path is wrong. And if you don't interrupt that path, it's gonna be a problem. It's, it's gonna be a problem, and you're gonna become a permanent problem and repeat permanent problems. You know, recycle problems. So. Uh, so that's you know from there that's where you know Fernand really goes into the rest of the chapters like a, it's 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 all um, dealing with that that contradiction and yeah. and uh, challenging uh, this new bourgeoisie to and, betray and that's the itself. Most challenging, but that's the most challenging of the contradiction mm -hmm. because it's like have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're popping this revolution shit, right? And it's like, it sounds good in theory, but the whole system has to be overturned. So even with this, we're questioning not only the two-party system, but as he later on talks about mm -hmm. the one-party system. You know what I mean? Because the thing is, you know, you cannot be anti-colonialist, but at the same time say, okay, now I'm gonna be neo-colonialist. Or 
as he talked about survive off the little trinkets. It's not just going to be we have little artisans and and local producers and all that. That's good if we have some type of uh, independent municipality, if we have some type of piece where we don't need to trade with the rest of the world, so on and so forth, where we're absolutely self-reliant and, 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 and independent and we are the manufacturers of all the goods and services in that particular area and region. But when you're talking about building a quote unquote metropolis, when you're talking about a country, so on and so forth, it's not going to work the same. You know, I, I even like what he was talking about, you know, because a lot of uh, our, our countries in a quest to decolonize at some point, they want to become tourist attractions. Mm -hmm. Right. But tourists are what? Playgrounds for the colon for the colonialists, mm -hmm. for the colonizer. You know what I'm saying? It is a way to invite these folks into your resorts and so on and so forth. And I think he touched on that lightly. But, you know, we have to look at this thing from a realistic perspective, a realistic point of view. And I don't think that we do that again because our ideas of victories, even the ones that we tell, have been become so packaged and manufactured even when you talk about Haitian revolution you're not thinking about the bloodshed you're not thinking about the spiritual aspect you're not thinking about Kubetet Bulekai you're not thinking about them burning their own places down and saying look now let's fight you understand what I'm saying you're talking about the French moving up on on the Haitians and like like they get there and the Haitians are like look we're gonna burn all of this land down not this what you came to get set that shit on fire you understand what i'm saying now let's go to war there's nothing like you couldn't imagine folks coming to your house to gentrify or, or some type of imminent domain and you burn it down and say okay now we're gonna have to fight because of the fact that i don't have nothing to lose you understand what i'm saying but that's not how we're looking at at at, at revolution we're looking at it from a you know, starry eyed, you know, our heroes would be on a stamp one day or a statue at the CIA building. And, you know, they, they feed on that and they feed in, they hide in the cracks and crevices. So even when they look like they're defeated, they may retreat, but they'll watch us undo ourselves. And I think that that's one of the things that this particular chapter, uh, you know, gives us, brings us. You know. Oh, and you spoke to it. I mean, and, and, and I thought of, uh, not that they were, I'm accusing them of doing what Fernand is saying, but I did think of, uh, cause he uses the word grandiloquent and I, and I, st I couldn't help but think of X clan, uh, you know, mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, right. you know, man, you would how do you say, how, no, I can't think of how he started. Van glorious. Uh, Van glorious. <laughs> right. By the right. red, exactly. the black and the green. <laughs> With the key. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, but this is what Fernand is talking about. He's saying, you know, he basically, as I understood this part, he's saying, um, you know, a lot of people talk trash. We yes. get up here and give these grandiloquent speeches are made That's about great. local crap. And then he, as he does here, I started thinking, and, and I made a note here about uh, uh, narrowing it to my own work. But he, like, I, I almost feel like he's talking like, uh, um, uh, he's describing this, this national bourgeoisie uh, but I I hear him talking about this this crop of black capitalists, you know, pundits and podcasters, who, yes. you know, and and even the narrow nationalists in some cases who will say, you know, the the whole buy black and buy from me, and you know, as he says, you know, grand eloquent speeches are made about local crafts, unable to establish factories which would be more profitable for the country and for themselves. The bourgeoisie cloaks local artisanship in a chauvinistic tenderness, which only tie not only ties in with the new national dignity, but also ensures them substantial profits. So it's this whole thing, like just like you said, we talk all this trash, but as he starts this page off with, the economy is always developed outside their control, so we don't control the economy yeah he yeah. even goes into a section of this chapter where he 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 prefigures the argument of people like today's marissa baradaran and others who are talking about the fantasies imposed through segregation make people think that they can do as you were just talking about create their own economies and live in this autonomous fantasy wakandan reality disassociated from the rest of the world no 
You can't right. just circulate your dollar and buy black. This is what Fanon is talking about here. You, you, you right. This is the fantasy he's talking about, this fake bourgeoisie imposes on their own people with these grandiloquent speeches of, of, of circulating the dollar and buy. All it does is give them substantial profits and, and, and never addresses the issue of how do we develop a nation? How do we feed ourselves? How do we produce what we need? Where do we engage in the dominant manufacturing sectors of the economy and all that? Nah, nah, nah. Like for all to say, now nah, they're just like, nah, we're just gonna give some speeches. We're gonna raise up some flags yeah, and some black yeah. and green to get, eh, yeah. Collect and, some money. And collect you know some money. Put, put that I was fiat. like, damn, yeah. he killed it with that. Man, yeah. Fanon was a beast, man. Man, listen, he, he went on to talk about <laughs> how we become conveyor belts. That's it, for, for capital. For, yes. I yes. got you I mean, right here. I got you yeah. right here. I, like, yes. The national bourgeoisie yeah. discovers its historical mission as intermediary, a conveyor belt for capitalism. You little conveyor belts. <laughs> <laughs> It is exactly what it is. And it's like, man, listen, th this book is like, if you really read this book here, man, chapter by chapter. So I think that we are literally doing, we're doing each other a service. We're doing the folks who are checking this out because this is not a book that you just read. You got to let this shit marinate. You, what, what, what you man say, let that shit breathe. You, you got to let, let it, it breathe. marinate. You, you got you to gotta literally hop in and break it down point for point because my man is rapping. You talk about bars, you know, a conveyor belt for capitalism. That is what, what we are and that's what we become. You know what I'm saying? Because again, not controlling the means of production, not controlling the resources, or if you do have the resources, one of the things he talked about, just the outsourcing the resources, how you're selling your resources to these other Europeans. And it, it reminds me of um, places like, um, uh the Congo and 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 uh um uh where's the chocolate coming from the cocoa um um Ghana Ghana you know what I'm saying where you have children who can't even afford to eat the chocolate after it's been pro after it's been processed you know what I mean but they don't even in, see it. no it's like the diamond miners they don't see the diamonds right right but if they do they couldn't even afford them and they 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 they're the ones producing it you know so again we are conveyor belts not just for capitalism but we're to a great extent conveyor belts for our own destruction we are this is part of the manufacturing of what i call a nigger machine mm -hmm. because of the fact that we are creative creating a self-destructive mechanism and helping to build these folks at the same damn time and we're sitting in the background wishing waiting and hoping that we can be like them and that's kind of what what he was talking about as well just with the whole neo-colonialist state it's like we replace one oppressor with the next oppressor. So now this oppressor looks like us. It's okay. We got Kamala Harris and Obama. You understand? Or in places like Jamaica and 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 other quote unquote uh, nations, where you have uh, where, where they're relying on resources from the colonizers. So you stay in debt. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, what was that? What was the documentary called? In debt. What was the name of that uh, documentary? There was a piece that um, there's one called just debt or the debt, and I think is isn't that um, no, I'm thinking of no, I'm thinking of the Randall Robinson who just passed actually. Um, no, I'm thinking of what's the one yeah. about? You talking about the one? Of, what's the one? Of, I'm thinking now. I'm thinking of the one about Jamaica. I'm, I'm thinking is it life in debt or something life like in debt? That. That's it. Okay. That's it. Okay. That's okay. it. Okay. About Jamaica. And, and, That's we think of the yes. same one. Yes. That's it. Life yes. in debt. Yeah. This, right. this, yeah. 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 And that, and that that that's that's another documentary that folks need to go check out because yeah, it 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 simplifies to a great extent, you know how this thing moves. I think that we get so caught up in in in, in fantasy, and we don't even understand independence. It's like I'm always talking about um, just how we have how Africans or Black folks or colonized people are satisfied with the perception of power. We have perceived power, not actual power. You understand what I'm saying? We like to look the part. We like to, you know, it, it's like back in the day in the 80s, 90s, whatever, everybody got the gold chains and, you know what I'm saying, the rings and the sheepskins and, 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 and the bomber jackets and all of that. You look in the part, but you are powerless. 
we're going to um to to Chinese and Korean stores to purchase gold. I mean, that alone and diamonds, quote unquote, that concept alone is 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 insanity. The fact that you're going to purchase diamonds from from someone else, from your oppressor, when again it came out of these diamond mines come out of your native land. I mean, this is this level of insanity is so deep that you know, I, I <laughs> being in the midst, sometimes even I question. I'm like, yo, listen, are we going to hell in a handbasket? Is is this? But at the same time, again, I look back at folks like Harriet and I'm like, nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to keep it moving. We got to keep on down this trail because eventually this rabbit hole can only go so deep. You know? Yeah, it's not in this chapter. And I don't remember if it's even in this book, but but I used to uh, I've referenced it for years. So I should just go look up where that reference is and I would know exactly where I'm getting it from. But for non talks about, to your point, this issue of of the colonized by the trinkets that are available to them. Cause I used to use this all the time in this response to when people say, well, if you would just stop buying hair and rims and fronts right, right, and all this, right. you would be, you could be rich. It's like, no, that's not how it works. It's, no. it's you, you buy what's available to you. The reason you're buying the $7 latte is cause you can't buy GE or Ford, or you can't, you know, develop, missiles you don't have land you know what i mean that's why you know what i'm saying that's why you're not that's what you buy uh and anyway so so yeah i mean it's it's um and you want uh, what the colonizer yeah. has and you I want mean, what because, the because yeah. this is what they've placed value on so if they say this is valuable then you say that's valuable you understand what i'm saying if 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 they say they're buying this type of car then that's what you want because you assume that you know that's that that gives you that that uh that image and I'm just showing here, that, to your point, what Fanon is calling the hedonistic mentality that prevails because at a psychological level, it identifies with the Western bourgeoisie uh, from which it has slurped every lesson. I like that he mm. even used <laughs> yeah, slurp. <Yeah. laughs> like, like you sit, like you got a straw trying to siphon the <laughs> the the the, the bocker. <laughs> <laughs> you are like, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? You like, you took a more advanced uh, uh, metaphor. I had a very different metaphor, and uh, uh, I, I could imagine. Yeah, I was like, yeah, you, you slurping. I, I, think, all right. I, I think I had, I think I had that with two, but I was just trying. You to, gave you know, the, no, I know. I appreciate yeah, the Disney version yeah. for Monday morning, but, but y'all know what like, it is, son. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, no. you know what it is. You know what yeah. he's saying over there. Stop playing. Yeah, Ron and Jeremy, stop, get out of here. Right, yeah. and more important stop doing it that's Please. what he sees stop Please. doing it uh yes. i mean you should be embarrassed this book slaps it slaps <laughs> it slaps you for even you know like like this is what you're doing it, it, it's almost like it, it, it's like it's a reminder the book is so when you look at the 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 the, the uh the choice of words you know it, it may seem difficult but it's really a simple piece you know what i'm saying it's just you trying to dig and dive through it and trying to figure out what he's saying but i mean it's plain and simple it's not it's, it's, it's it doesn't you don't need any uh real formal education you can figure it out you know what i'm saying because it, it's like it's clear it's everyday life you know and he and he made it as simple as possible but yeah no i mean the no, man, he does they slurp yeah yeah and 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 then he also does i mean he does I mean, he does a lot in this chapter, so much just in this one chapter. But and it, so he because from there he moves into this whole point of um, that what what ends up resulting from this new this 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 Western style bourgeoisie is um, what he calls a, a regression. Um, uh, so he says we switched from nationalism to ultra nationalism, chauvinism and racism. And then he starts to talk about this regressive turn to uh, Africans going against Africans. And it's it, right. it, it felt very it resonated very well with today. This idea that that, you you know, you start having this this 
ethnic group throwing out that group and this one going right. against that right. one and and going backwards into this right. and he's trying to say no we need to be going that way into international we need to be moving beyond these imposed identities and borders and tribalism and, and what tribalism called. and all of that Religion. and yeah but yeah. that doesn't benefit each false national bourgeoisie no and it's the bourgeoisie that benefit from all the dif- distance and as he talks about uh, uh want to continue and perpetuate uh the disunity because they benefit from it and then they right. use this language of it's right. for the people right. it's for the it's, culture it's, 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 it's a religious whatever. war yeah it's all this other nonsense yeah. it's the sidetracking of the slave but this yeah. goes back that that's what i was saying earlier it's like they retreat back into to the hills quote unquote and they, they, they're peeping the disunity and they feed off of it so they're literally in the cracks and crevices like roaches you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and they're waiting the 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 these the, the snow roaches they're waiting to come back out after they have you confused so mm-hmm. you have this dominant group over here who happen to be uh uh, uh muslim or or into catholicism or whatever the case is atheists they don't give a damn they come in and they say look man you know we can we can fund you you understand what i'm saying we we can you know we can make you 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 should be in leadership that's right and because of the fact that again we haven't had a well thought out plan for after revolution then again we move into that whole neo colonialist state so now the colonizers are still playing a role but it's okay because now they have a black representative you know what I mean? So you have Andre Dickens, who is a a black hip hop mayor. You know what I'm saying? You can take a, a what's your boy name up in New York? Eric Adams. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, a career cop. A career pig who's able in, in the middle of the police state being at its highest of heights. You can get a quote unquote ex pig, elect him mayor of New York, one of the one of the first places in the country to establish a quote unquote police department, one of the most ruthless police departments in America, you could take this quote unquote black ex cop and expect that he's going to fix some broken window policing. I mean, it's just like the insanity of it. First of all, there is no ex cop. You understand what I'm saying? You're going to move like a cop, whatever. It's, it's just like when they talk about addicts, you still have, um, uh, addiction tendencies because it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's in you you know what i'm saying it's, you know we, we're ex-slaves you know what i'm saying so we still have that mentality it's just you gotta, part of the we, DNA. We gotta find a meeting to go to we got you better do something so he we uh <laughs> so here's here's in new york go ahead. Let, let me let me draw some throw some connections to all that's been said today so you mentioned Davey d earlier i saw him uh, uh posting a picture with him and e40 after e40 apparently got thrown out of some baseball event or something in oakland right, right. i don't so, know whether they got us yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so i was thinking you know and you're talking about you know eric adams and all this right now in maryland we got the the west point trained governor uh, and this is this is the connection I'm making with the E40 sprinkling. Work with me, people. Work with me, everybody. He sprinkled me, man. Oh man! <laughs> Governor Moore is running around sprinkling money to this new black bourgeoisie. He's helping to create. That's going to get him, you know, supported at the next level for president. And it's that same. It's it's this. It's the same uh, uh, a pattern. Just 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 being redeveloped. Um, yeah. And and it is it is almost the collapsing of what Fanon talks about here, where the the unequal underdevelopment of a colony causes room or creates the room for this bourgeoisie to be developed and work against the rest of the colony. So just in this example here, he's talking about, uh, uh, you know, they exploit the segment of the colony that they need and the rest of it is left to squander. Um, and then that difference can be played out again against the colony and the colonized uh, as those called from the the more developed sector can become that bourgeoisie that speaks out against the rest. So that's why Fanon, so much of the rest of Fanon's focus on this chapter is 
there has to be a reconnection with the interior and with 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 those that have been cast aside. Uh, uh, um, and I think Emma put it in the chat earlier uh, that there needs to be what she describes. I think Fernanda is saying differently, but a, 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 a dictatorship of the colonized proletariat. And I think that's what Fanon is ultimately advocating for in this chapter, um, which is another fascinating, brilliant, and accurate challenge posed to us. Because in, as I keep thinking about where we are today, we got a lot of work to do. We got oh, a lot yeah. of work to do. It, it, I mean, it, it almost seems impossible, but we got to make the impossible look easy, though. Because the reality is, you know, we're going to have petty disagreements. We're going to have, um, you know, the situations that arise based on, you know, personality, proximity, whatever the case is, you know, and, you know, ultimately it also has to deal with comfort. Mm -hmm. Folks don't want to be discomfortable. They, they don't want to be uh, uncomfortable. They don't want to experience discomfort. And, you know, in, in work, in any type of work, you're going to experience discomfort because it, it's a it's, it's that painful process of transformation. I don't care if you're working out, you, no pain, no gain. And we, even when he's talking about violence, you know, again, you're going to have folks who, uh, you know, we don't need to be violent or whatever, so on and so forth. Again, there's no bloodless, bloodless revolution. It sounds good in theory. Someone got hit with something. You know what I'm saying? And even in 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 this in this decolonization process, when you're talking about um moving forward, you have to use unconventional methods. Because again, we're all not gonna agree because of these different separations, you know, religion, you know, uh culture, um, tribalism, like he like he talked about, you know, and I think it was brilliant him him going into how the Africans begin to turn on each other. You know what I mean? We don't like the Senegalese. We don't like the, the homie. Go back to your bush. Go back. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, woo. Same thing here. We, I mean, we, you know, I grew up with the phrase Bama hmm. taken from, which was, which we used to refer to, you know, to say, uh, uh, you know, well, thugs or hoods or, 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 or the, 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 the backward, black folks but of course bama meant initially the considered from the northern view of the southerners coming up from alabama like they were just bamas backwards and all this other kind of stuff but it's the same kind of logic right. that 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 the, this new neo-colonial bourgeoisie is looking at the come on bamas get yourself together you know right. it's like you know come on and and we have to we have to recognize and, and as he talks about even on the next page where he's talking about or the pages where he's talking about the 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 uh, um, uh, the way Islam and Catholicism are are used against one another, with colonialism shamelessly pulling on all the strings, um, you know. Now, I mean, he raises something interesting in this paragraph, though, that I because I think when he says when he's talking about how the Senegalese magazine um, secretes its weekly dose of hatred against Islam and the Arabs by talking about how the, the Arab invasion and enslavement paved the way for European colonialism. I did, I did wonder, you know, is that not accurate history though? Is that not, now I get, we don't want to have that be turned into what colonialism can shamelessly pull uh, as a string to, dis, to, to, to create disunity. But at some point, I think, wouldn't that contradiction have to be dealt with? But um, yeah. in any I, event. Yeah, I, I think that all contradictions have to be dealt with, right? Um, but but it, it's how do we approach these contradictions? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the two types of contradictions. We got constructive and, and antagonistic. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, criticisms, more or less. Um, how do we deal with the antagonisms? How do we approach these situations? So... I think that one thing that's important is it's it's a we, we deal with the major contradictions first. Okay. We disagree with being colonized, right? 
Then we can come back and deal with all these other things. Okay, boom. Your religion does this. It 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 oppresses that, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. I think one of our, our grave errors is that we have so many different contradictions that we get lost amongst the contradictions and we're not dealing with the primary contradiction that 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 is that is the the quote unquote elephant in the room so we have the primary and we have the secondaries okay so we know that the primary has to be destroyed and then to me the secondary contradictions you know you can deal with those it's like okay boom you can no longer roll out here like this you can't be selling drugs you can do both but it has to be in a way that that we remain focused because i think that there'll always be you know to a great extent disagreements and contradictions and whatnot mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. that's just how i see it i could be wrong but you know no i mean i think i mean this is sort of my point and i you know i and this is this is i mean this is why i raised the question i think that that fanon is right that colonialism is going to the colonizer is always going to take advantage Oh yeah, uh, uh, oh, yes. you know. So, but, but, um, so, so, maybe starting with that understanding, I think we do have to find constructive ways of engaging these complicated uh, other differences. Um, yeah. But, uh, and again, I just want to remind not you per se, but everyone just in general that this chapter is Fanon's consideration of the situation after the initial armed struggle. So, right. so. We haven't even we you know after the initial independence is where he's at. We're not mm-hmm. even. I don't think we're even there yet. Uh, yeah, you know, so yeah. like like you know, uh, th- that's why I'm very cautious and and sometimes disturbed by how we engage our. And I, again, I'm not meaning me and you, but in general, how we all engage our disagreements and differences. Um, yes, and it's yeah. So anyway, I. Anyway. You know, and, and it's, 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 I mean, it's it's important. We're not, see, the thing is, we're not talking about, and I want folks to be clear because sometimes people get it confused. We're not talking about glossing over it, right? Mm-hmm. That's not what we're saying at all. Indeed, there are a number of different contradictions. But the first thing, if we're in a room where we don't have air, right, where we have limited oxygen, and then inside of that room, we have someone who is uh, gluttonous. Inside this room, we have someone that that curses a lot. We have someone who is disrespectful towards religion or whatever the case is. Let's get this oxygen so we can breathe. Mm-hmm. Then let's deal with all this other shit. With colonialism and, and capitalism, we are being smothered. Okay. And they are root causes to a lot of these other issues. So we eradicate the main issue and deal with these, these secondary issues as well. You know, so we have it's like what they talk about. Um, uh, Mao with um, talking about uh, um, contradictions between the people reconcilable, contradictions between the people in the state irreconcilable, right? So we have to be clear about who we're dealing with and how we're dealing with. Is is this is this entity or program is it designed for your absolute destruction or are there kinks in it that need to be smoothed out you know what i'm saying how do we deal with this you know what what are we dealing with here you know so that that's kind of how i see it and again i I know that you know everyone won't quite agree with that but you know i'm looking at things beyond the moment and i Mm -hmm. think that you know again we get caught up in the battles opposed to the war we have to win the war the battles we're going to struggle with, we might lose a battle here and there, but the war is the ultimate goal. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I you know, I struggle with this too, and I think you know, it's interesting. Uh, um, I definitely don't have an answer. I think Emma raises very, something very interesting here when saying that that uh, they don't see the contradictions like that. It's a, it, it isn't to prioritize contradictions. The usefulness of understanding primary contradiction is to align our, all our struggle against all contradictions in weakening that primary contradiction so but but i struggle with that because it so from here from on in the in subsequent pages it goes into um something that for instance is happening right now in uganda the the you know where 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 he mentions the um 
uh, the the importation of American Protestantism transports its anti-Catholic prejudices onto African soil. So I made a note there that, you know, this is the same thing that's happening with with uh, um, the imposition of 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 uh, um, anti LGBTQ, you know, sentiments and religious sentiments into Uganda, all coming from the West, all, you know, certainly supported, sponsored by the West. Uh, this current divide, as I've seen others bring up in the chat, um, between North and you know Sub-Saharan Africa, Black Africa, White Africa, as Fanon talks about. He in, in the very next pages he talks about not re recreating the feudal arrangements between men and women, and and bringing women into equal status. You know, but to Emma's point, I don't see. I just don't know how that how you address all of them all at once. Um, I don't, and maybe that's just the question. How do you develop the movement that would develop the nationalism necessary to engage in the initial forms of struggle that get us to the point where Fanon is now in this book, uh, while all while considering all of these contradictions simultaneously and without hierarchy? I don't know how to do that. And I don't know yet. Yeah. So I, I would say something I keep thinking about. But yeah, go ahead. I, I, I would say the first thing, of course, political education, clearly defining what it is, what, what the contradictions are, and where do the contradictions stem from? You know what I'm saying? So if we have an infestation, we have to figure out how did the, the bugs or the vermin, or whatever the case is, get inside of the place. That's the first thing, okay? We got to seal off the corridors, make sure no others are getting in. And then we have to begin to take them out. You understand what I'm saying? If we don't, if we just take those out and we don't cover the spaces, then more will be back. So it'll be, you know, we'll just be setting traps and setting traps and setting traps and hoping that we kill off millions of, of, of pests, right? But that's not realistic, right? So we have to say, what is the cause of this thing? What's attracting them? You know what I'm saying? You have some still water. We have a, a mosquito infestation. Where the mosquitoes come from? Why are they here? Okay, boom. We have water buckets all over the place. We have still water everywhere. So we got to get rid of those water buckets or cover them or something so the mosquitoes can't hatch. So I think that we have to deal with this thing from a holistic perspective i think that we approach movement and struggle similar to similarly to the way we approach uh it, it's like western medicine you know what i'm saying your your foot hurts so let me give you these pills for your foot now these pills drove your blood pressure up now you now you got blood pressure pills now you take these other pills you have a headache you know what i'm saying what is the problem how do we solve this Okay, there's a lack of nutrients somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So we have to deal with it from a holistic perspective. We're lacking certain vitamins. We're lacking certain minerals. And in this movement, we're lacking certain vitals, vitamins. We're lacking certain minerals. So we have to figure out what is the primary cause of these contradictions. But if we just, you know, I'm fighting for environmentalism. I'm over here against police terrorism. I'm against and I'm for animal rights. I'm this, whatever. We we are only focused on individual pieces instead of the whole. And what is the whole? It is capitalism. It is imperialism. It's colonialism. That is our enemy. And that's what we have to deal with. And I think those other contradictions will eventually, hopefully, fall in place or at least tighten up. Yeah. Fanon has uh, later in this chapter talks about that. Well, at le least the specific point that you raised about the need for political education, um, and uh, because um, I, admittedly, selfishly, I couldn't help re reducing this back to my own, um, my own, you know, work, but. Part of what he's talking about, as I understood it, is a lot of what you were just saying, that without, as he, he describes here, all, all this obviously cannot succeed unless the people are politically educated. Um, and part of what he's talking about here is 
is part of what I th think is another contradiction misunderstood, and I think speaks to your point as well, that people who promote these ideas of black capitalism, buying black, banking black, and all of these other things miss in their in their attempt to to uh, offer those up as as solutions. Um, uh, so when Vernon says here to nationalize the tertiary sector means organizing democratically the cooperatives for buying and selling. First of all, he's talking about this again. We're talking about after the nationalized independence struggle, the armed struggle for independence. We're talking about after the emergence of this new bourgeoisie. We're talking about after their failure, as he describes it, to 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 uh, fully recognize the differences in colonization and its application and the and to bring in the people from as he's talking about here the tertiary sectors of society the outskirts the the, the you know the um but he's saying part of what the goal needs to be is organizing democratically cooperatives for buying and selling. And I heard, I started seeing automatic, okay, here we go. People are going to start saying, oh, see, Fanon said cooperatives can work and and Jared is wrong. And this is why we need to, you know, cooperative economics, da, 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 is a solution that can, we can engage outside of an anti-colonial struggle, blah, 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 blah. But again, uh, this is the part I think that they're missing, that, that, Fanon is talking about organizing democratically cooperatives for buying and selling after the fact of national independence, after the fact of uh, uh, at least nominal uh, you know, uh, freedom from armed struggle. And yeah. after there has been this, this uh, again, nominal control over the mechanisms of society, the means of production, so on and so forth. But he's saying specifically that this requires political education. Because, um, uh, as he says later on the page, the bourgeois governments of the capitalist countries have long since left this infantile phase of power behind. In, in, in other words, it's like it's like the it's just like what the French did literally when they left the country and took every light bulb and every everything that would functionally help the, the, the people move past the colonization. The French took with them and just left the 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 empty structures that's what happens intellectually or or you know immaterially with an approach to capital and capitalism so that you people are left with these black capitalist fantasies with none of this structure none of the substance that would would none of the means of production none of the power none of the organization that would allow uh, even that misunderstanding to 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 materialize uh, right. so so as Fernand says they govern dispassionately using their laws, their economic power, and their police force. Now that their authority is solidly established, they are not obliged to waste time with demagogic considerations. They govern at their own interest uh, and make no nonsense about it. They have made themselves legitimate and are strong in their own right. And again, as I understand it, what he's just talking about here and cautioning against is this, again, fantasy of, 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 of a new bourgeoisie taking over um uh uh and and organizing an economy in a way that will benefit the people when in fact the structures are not set for that the people are not politically educated for that and this national bourgeoisie is just going to continue to exploit their own population which is exactly what i see happening with this nonsense today in in our country in the united states at least in this community of black people who are telling others hey now nah, man just shop with me invest with me listen to me right. you know right. buy my stuff uh uh and we you know forget all that political stuff and all the you know jared and kalanji and all that they're they're lunatics that's not what you need what you need is just to black capital your way and obviously through me and uh we'll get there and right. anyway, so I just again, to me, Fanon is just brilliantly laying out all these problems that even however many years later in this country's context, we still have to deal with. It's, it's yeah, I, I think part of our thing, too, is we're, we're like as far as a quote unquote movement, if we dare say that we're trapped somewhere between immature and senile politics. You have folks who on one end, um, their, their politics are totally, you know, nowhere near developed. Mm -hmm. And then you have some other folks who have these senile politics who want uh, reconciliation with with the enemy. And I think that we have to find some type of balance. Um, we're also looking at, you know, for non, this is something that was written early 60s, as we mentioned mm -hmm. before. 
Fanon was 36 years old when he made his transition. You know, so we we factor in all types of things. And we're not we're not looking at Fanon as some type of demigod, but at the same time, we're respecting what it is that he brought to the table. And our attempts and efforts here are to show the correlation between then and now in these two totally different regions with different quote unquote oppressors with the same goal. And they're these these different oppressors, their their goal is domination. Their goal is um is is imperialism and it is their machine is well oiled. The unfortunate thing is we've been damn near obliterated. I feel like they've dropped a bomb on on African and colonized people and our pieces have, and, and shards have been scattered all across and we're trying to put these pieces back together again and we're using all types of different philosophies and ideologies and, and theories but in practice we lack because like you said we, we have I mean to a great extent folks who are talking this black capitalism shit it, it's almost like betrayal because you know damn well with what you what you're talking about bringing to the table will never suffice the masses. It's impossible. It still will. It still will be. It's, it's still a form of colonialism. You know what I'm saying? It's still it's still capitalism, and capitalism does not work for us, no matter how you try to wrap it. And I know people say, well, you know, we live in a capitalist society and all that. So what? Because you live in Sodom and Gomorrah, don't mean you have to be hedonistic. You don't mean you have to do what everyone else is doing, you know? And so. that's the point for non. And this is the challenge that he presents. He's saying you, to your point, you don't have to become that. In fact, he's saying you have to destroy that. Yes, and that's, exactly. that's the, so, so this is, this was maybe, maybe my favorite part of the book so far, actually. I, I used to think it was, you know, it used to be, I don't know, maybe maybe just of this chapter. Let me just let me slow my roll here for a second. I really like this part of the of the book, of this chapter, where because he does what I mentioned earlier is so important in explaining, laying out the Algerian example of what you're just talking about. So A, he's saying to your point, Kalanji, let me show you what happened in Algeria. So to not because I'm saying and he says this explicitly, not because I'm saying we are some special group of people that that are better than everybody else, but because we had a special a certain certain set of circumstances that uh, against which we 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 struggled. And were successful in uh, based on those sets of circumstances, you all can others of you can do versions of this set specific to your circumstances and even correcting some of our flaws. That's okay. one point that I think he does with this section. The other part that he does that for me is, is so, so interesting as well, is that he explains what what Marissa Baradaran and others have talked about more recently in terms of black America, this fantasy that segregation creates a segregated economy and a segregated reality. And we can turn segregation into Wakanda and Fanon explains using Algeria and France, how this cannot be and how Algeria corrected that problem and how we must correct that problem. So in other words, so he says here, he talks about here how in 56 and 57, the French colonialism set up certain zones that were off limits uh, and travel in these regions were reg strictly regulate, regulated. And then he, as he goes on to talk about what that created was a situation where uh, you would have segregated economies and it would create black markets and and. Uh, locally based, you know, uh, small industry and business that allowed for small sets of a of a of a of a bourgeoisie to to of a business class to emerge. Long story short, but what he shows here is that through the pro process of revolution, once people became uh, uh, empowered. And as he says here, on the basis of this experience, it was explained to the people how the laws of economics functioned, taking concrete examples. The accumulation of capital turned from a theory into a very real and topical mode of behavior. So he's saying after this revolutionary process, people started to realize that the, the segregated economy set up through colonialism was fraudulent 
The people understood how one could get rich from a business and expand it. It was only then that the peasants recounted how their grocer lent them money at usurious rates. Others recalled how he had driven them from their land and how they had gone from being landowners to laborers. So he's saying once we started to realize how people started getting rich off of of our exploitation, our own people exploiting us, they started to reorganize all of this away from, as he's describing here, um, uh, uh, understanding that the wealth that was being created by this, 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 I guess, business class was not wealth, was not the fruit of labor, but the spoils from an organized protection racket. Right. Exploitation. Exploit state organized exploitation. So as he said, one, uh, uh, anyway, I'll, the point is he, he, he talks about how through this process of revolution, the people realized, no, we just have to organize. He doesn't use the word communism. He doesn't use the word socialism. He doesn't even, or scientific socialism, but he right. talks about the organized production and distribution of what people need based on the needs of the people. And, may, and if, if redistribution is created properly, he's talking about, he, he said, we ended up, the Algerians ended up with more than they needed. People were getting, he, he said, they, they found themselves up to 3,200 calories per person, a diet per person a day. That's, right. first of all, that's fattening. That's too much. He, he was, you know, you need, to get, you need to cut that back. So I'm yeah, saying like, like, cut it in half. Cut it in half. So, he's, so like, that's, but, my, but his point, and as I understand his point, he's saying the beauty of it is once we realized we got rid of this exploited class, we had more than we needed. We had right. plenty for everybody. And that's what we need to get to. Oh man, I loved it. I just, I love right. that part. Right. I mean, and, it, and it, it's, it's a microcosm of the macrocosm. This is the planet. You know what I'm saying? You have over a billion people on the planet without adequate water. You know what I'm saying? You have over a billion people who are, you know, without adequate housing. You know what I'm saying? You have, I mean, it's all about exploitation and it's all about greed. It's about domination. And, you know, imagine, you know, the fact that we, there, there's no reason for anyone on the planet to be hungry. I mean, in the U.S. alone, all the food that's thrown away, you know, I mean, daily. You know, just restaurants dumping stuff in the in the dumpsters and all kinds of. I mean, this is 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 is, is total madness and just keeping that, food off the market to drive prices up. Yes, I mean that housing the same thing. That you know the fact that gentrification is genocide. You're talking about destruction of communities in real time for someone else's comfort. You know what I mean? Just so that they can have lattes and jog in the morning with their, their with their dogs. You know what I'm saying? This is this is, I mean, man. I mean, so <laughs> when you talk about revolution, that's like, I mean, we must sound insane. You know, it's like, what are you talking about? Like, why why should everybody eat? Why should everyone eat? That that's that's not you know, <laughs> water. Who needs adequate water? They have other things in Jackson. Uh, Dion was down there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what's happening? You know, we, 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 we're, in, we're in a sad state of reality, man. So for me, there's just two more points from this chapter I wanted to bring up. Um, and then I've highlighted a couple comments and questions. I don't know if there's more you want to get to. We can we can go from there. But I'm, I'm riding but, a shotgun at this point. OK, man. right. <laughs> So just quickly, um, this part here, because part of what he ends up talking about, as I as I understand it, is that that one of the problems that is confronting us is 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 media and particularly media directed to the youth, because one of the points he makes that is phenomenal is that we need to have our youth. And it's like a new spin on the children are the future piece, because his point is the children are the future because they're our future military. Right. But they can't be raised. He has oh, so much beauty, beauty in here. He says they can't just be raised to just be a military. They have to be seen. They, they have to be raised to be seen as part of as citizens who just who are just grouped, who are just seen as a particular group of citizens who defend the nation with with arms, as opposed to having a separately permanently trained military class that Fanon rightfully says will ultimately turn itself against the people if they see themselves as separate as a separate military force and said, instead of part of the people who just happen to be the ones to defend with arms, then they become the army against the people. 
So so one of the first things he talks about is is that is is how media is affecting media and education are targeting young people. So the high percentage of young people in the undeveloped countries poses specified problems for the government that must be addressed lucidly. The idle and often illiterate urban youth is exposed to all kinds of disrupting influences. Youth in the underdeveloped countries, as in most cases, marketed entertainment from the industrialized countries. So even again, I, I took this directly into my own work, saying that the media we get, this is my Vernon philosophy. The, the, the media we are getting directed to us is not, is, com is not coming to us from us despite its presentation, it's despite its branding. It's coming from the colonizer. Right. Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, jump in. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, you, 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 no, I'm saying, no, you, you're spot on. And, and again, you know, that's why, I mean, it's the easiest form of mass mind control because, you know, we, we're, they're feeding us our thoughts. You know what I'm saying? You talk about AI, artificial intelligence, that's the, 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 artificial intelligence been in effect you know what i'm saying their media is art artificial intelligence you know what i'm saying they've been feeding us and making us think that this is what we want this is what we desire you know so i mean it's a cold machine the media itself is the megaphone for the west you know this is like you know we, when we talk about world news the fact that every channel you turn on got the same has the same news I mean, and no one questions it. Like, oh, is this going to? So you mean nothing else is going on in the entire on the entire planet? Just what they've picked and choose? I mean, it's it's, it's insanity. But it is insanity. Yeah, no, no, this is. I mean, that this is, and and knowing that this is from over sixty years ago. You know I mean, what look saying? at what he's saying here. Access to entertainment devised for the youth of the capitalist countries. Detective stories. I mean, right. how many law and orders do we have? Ice and, and, tea. Yes. And and Ice T and 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 and, and, and um, what's her name? Is really Kim. Queen Latifah now is really that wait, one. Wait, so me so more. so check it. So yeah. this is this is he's talking about detective stories in 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 Algiers or France. You know, in 1960. Saying? Now we he got slot machines, hardcore photos, pornographic literature. I mean, yes. he this is before Pornhub and all of that. All I mean, this the is, this is... the world, same song. This is the same old song. You see, now, I admit it hurts Pornhub. me. <laughs> he, he got he got alcohol in there. It hurts me. You know, we we yes. we like a little sip around here every once hey, in a while. So you know, but we got a contradictions. You know, saying you got you got, it, you got a hold tight, man. You know, I mean, I mean, the fact that the detective stories was first is like the most gangster to me. I mean, we we don't even. I mean, how many detective stories are there on on TV right now? And it, it's like we love it. Not only detective stories, you got everything from what's the last 48 or first 48, first 48. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an endless amount. There's like 50 different law and orders. There's like, yeah. it's like, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Right. But he has already talked about it in this section. We mentioned it maybe uh, um, earlier, but, but when you were bringing up the point about the one party system, Part right. of what Fernand talks about in that section is that the one party ends up becoming like the overarching, it becomes, he says it becomes the, it's the one political party, the military and the police. Right. So he's right. like, it, 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 so of course the first thing that even he is acknowledging, they're going to put out them right. damn detective stories that God yes. damn it. They're gonna <laughs> you're going to like the police mama, right. one way or another. Yeah. One way or another. And, and, oh, and it's so crazy, but but it's but the propaganda is so ill too that you will find folks who are quote quote unquote anti-state. They will have you rooting for the police. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, you know, man, she's a mother. You see what they did to the to the to the to the, to the woman cop, whatever. You see what they did to you know what I mean? So you're confused into thinking that your enemy is only one gender and one shade. You know what I'm saying? It's like this is it's just this. You know what I mean? When you see this, this is the bad guy. Yeah. You know, so yeah, no, nah, it, it's it's amazing. And and Ice T has made a career oh off of God. playing police and pimps. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this is his this is what he does. You know, you know, LL Cool J, 
you know, uh, 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 like you said, Latifah, this is, it's part of the joint. You know, this is, this is the love we get, you know? So yeah, it's, it's propaganda is a motherfucker, boy. Yeah. Um, so th this is, now this is, this is admittedly painful for me, uh, okay. because this is, this is, this is the part, the last point I want to bring up for today is the point I forgot to bring up this weekend. But this this is, you know, so because the other part that Fanon ends up talking about here is in, in terms of, of of what is attacking the youth and how we understand everything and da 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 is this. And again, his point is that the youth have to be particularly seen as important because they are the military. They're going to comprise the military that is, again, part of the community, but they have to be able they're the ones that can do that work. And again, all due respect to those who are in better shape than me. But once you cross into the fifties, I'm like, I just don't see how many of us could be doing all that frontline fighting. Like, you know, even the best of us got to have a little youth help, man. You know? So anyway, but this is the point he says here talking about sports. Um, the youth of Africa should not be oriented towards the stadiums, but towards the fields, the fields and the schools. The stadium is not an urban showpiece, but a rural space that is cleared, worked and offered to the nation. I love this wipe out the stadium right. the capitalist notion of sports is fundamentally different that from that which should exist in an underdeveloped country the african politician should not be concerned with producing professional sportsmen but conscious individuals who also practice sports if sports are not incorporated into the life of the nation i.e the building of the nation if we produce national sportsmen instead of conscious individuals then sports will qu quickly be ruined by professionalism and commercialism a sport should not be a game or entertainment for the urban bourgeoisie. Now, well, just quickly. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just saying we we are here. Go ahead. We are, so just quickly, because I, I in trying to prepare for this this past weekend, I, I was looking up some other things. And one of the contradictions, of course, is that Fanon loves sports. Fanon played right. soccer all the time. He was an avid athlete. He loves, you know. Uh, um, and he he wrote less about sports than I thought, which was interesting. And someone re actually wrote an article about the contradiction of Fanon not writing as much about sports and colonialism as they would have thought he should have. But anyway, but um, uh, so he's not saying sports are bad. He's not saying athleticism is bad. He's saying right. we have to recognize, just as he says in this chapter about the military, we're not creating warriors as permanent solely focused warriors we're creating conscious citizens and people of our community some will practice war some will practice sport some will practice medicine some will practice law some will be shopkeepers some will do educate you know that's what he said but we're all with the consciousness of being part of this nation not entertaining an urban bourgeoisie, not creating a capitalist elite, not having the colonial contradictions uh, 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 safely put onto a field or a court, um, not so that we can, cre again, create class. And he talks even about caste concerns, not, not allowing castes to be created in this post-colonial moment. Anyway, he just, but to me, he says, if not all, he says a lot right here and this is a, right. a big problem with where we are and how we engage sports yeah right so so in essence he's saying that um and and, and this might not be the best example but i'm just going to use it for the matter of fact we need more ali's more muhammad ali's um in, in his prime let me just say mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. we know that the contradictions beyond that and 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 the quote unquote uh the mock moods and 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 the uh, you know to a lesser extent the Kaepernicks should be the norm, not the exception to the rule, and then you wouldn't have to worry about LeBron making statements and backtracking and backpedaling, you know, whenever they say you know bring it back, you know. So it, it's it's particularly here in the United States, and of course we're seeing it all over the planet. The fact that entertainment entertainers represent us as quote unquote leaders, you know what I'm saying, or that entertainers can be politicians and politicians and entertainment are synonymous. You know, when you look at folks like Schwarzenegger and and uh, Jesse the Body Ventura and uh, Sonny Bono and I mean Ronald Reagan, the list goes on. 
you know, it is, it is, it is fashionable for us. We don't take our politics serious. So if we don't take electoral politics serious, the, the politics of liberation don't stand a chance. Yeah, right on. You know, it doesn't stand a chance. But no, that that's an an excellent uh, piece because again, it it ties into the ta- into the title. I think that until we arrive at a juncture where, um as we say, organizing is the new cool. When we, when we know that political education is, 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 is tantamount until that point, then it's like we, we're hustling backwards. I mean, we're going full speed running backwards. That's the, the craziest thing. You're bound to fall. You're bound to trip or bump into something. So yeah, no, we definitely appreciate, um, you know, his contribution. And I, I heard what you were saying as far as the, you know, folks, uh, talking about him not, not not speaking enough on sports i mean again the man's 36 man god damn i mean like uh, I yeah I, it, 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 it wasn't write a whole bible yeah <laughs> and it wasn't like the article wasn't like really shitting on him it was just okay, saying okay, like right. I, I i given given his love of sport and his love right. of anti-colonialism it was like right. i thought he might have it wasn't like they were hating on him it was just okay, an right, interesting right. point you know uh we got check these days yeah 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 no question no question now there is one more thing i, I did there is one more point i wanted to raise and i admit right. My pettiness was thinking about another recent podcast that, we, you know, on, on Friday, my exchange with, with Brother Diallo when I read this part. I, and that's why I highlighted shout, it. In, shout in out to you color. and Diallo and y'all's wild. Oh, yeah, love Friday. it. I love it. No question. I got, no I got question. like five calls, like, like hop on. <laughs> like, no like, question. Get, you got it. I'm like, get, get you muting them. Don't worry about it. It's all good. The, 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 the I've gotten a, a more than usual response to that last show uh very interesting we're gonna have we're gonna have to we anyway i i love it but it's it's anyway yeah, yeah. Uh, there are a couple things but he talks here because because at the he ends the chapter very strong and i love again he, he 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 he's i love it but he says this is the part i really like this part here he says um uh, the above arguments are borne out by actual experience in certain regions. It sometimes occurs during a meeting that a militant's answer to a difficult problem is all we need to do is this voluntary shortcut, which dangerously, ugh, which dangerously combines spontaneity, simplistic syncretism, and little intellectual elaboration, frequently wins the day. Every time we hear encounter, every time we encounter this abdication of responsibility in a militant, it is not enough to say he is wrong. This that to me, every time we encounter this abdication of responsibility in a militant, it is not enough to say he is wrong. He has to be made responsible encouraged to follow through his chain of reasoning to its conclusion and taught to grasp the often atrocious, inhuman, and finally sterile nature of this all you need to do is. Nobody has a monopoly on truth, neither the leader nor the militant. I love what he says there, and I co-sign that, and I think it's it's very powerful. And then just finally, he, he ends, he, there's a lot more that he says here that's really important, but I just want to highlight, most importantly, that as he says here, there is, um, where's the line? Where's the line that I was looking for? Oh, damn. Anyway, the, the point is, is that he says that there's no, there's, uh, um, you, oh, what does he say? You, you either, everybody's got to be down or you're a coward or a traitor. Now for, oh, where, I thought it was right there at the end. There it is, there it is, there it is. There are no clean hands, no innocent bystanders in this struggle. We are all in this process of dirtying our hands in the quagmire of our soil and the terrifying void of our minds. Any bystander is a coward or a traitor. So, anyway. Uh, so, um, get your hands dirty. Get your hands dirty, and you got to be responsible. You got like I like I like his point about it's an abdication of responsibility to simply throw out these 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 uh, 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 even powerfully presented quotes and present, you know, perform presentations you, you, and, and not think through beyond trying to win a debate or win, win a screen session. Uh, right. We have to really think through what is it that we're, what happens next? And then what happens after that? What happens after that? What happens after that? And that's why, as I said, when we were talking with Oba Tashaka the other day, I really wish I could go back. I think more of our youngsters need to pick up the game go. Right. Get rid of chess. Chess is not enough. 
go forces so much more thought and forethought and 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 reaction to other people's forethought that I think, you know, like ultimately the way I read that is, and this is this is why I was personalizing in terms of the Friday, is that we have to want to win and we can't reduce it to our individual performance or winning a debate or an argument or presenting ourselves as the the king militant. There has to be uh yeah, that's it. Yeah. I, and, that's and, it. Yeah. And and I think that it also requires more theory and, and I mean, excuse me, more practice to go along mm -hmm. with the theory. Because I think that so many people have uh great theory, but it's the practice itself that's often lacking. You know what I'm saying? I think that um, there are great individuals who have brought, you know, excellent theory to the forefront. But when it comes to the whole practice side, it's like, you know, well, let's quote such and such. Well, well, well this one was talking about that. With all due respect, fuck that one. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yo, right now, the material conditions and what's going on where I am at this very moment trumps all that shit you talking. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, those folks down the block who, who are experiencing whatever situations that are being experienced right now, the, the practice is what matters to them at this particular moment. You know, so I think, and, and that, that it goes from the different the difference between survival programs and and full-blown decolonization program programs you know i think that we are we are great critics of our movement but when it comes to that hands-on you know we, we we use too much up with that you know with the criticism well you know you're not doing it right or you, you're not hop your ass on and get busy get on board if you're not on board, it sounds good. You know, we live in such a world right now, man, where everything is just so digitized. Everything is so, um, uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's just, I don't know. When, 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 the, when the age of, of, of theory and, and it's, it's, it's disturbing because we can be on the sideline and commentate about folks on the battlefield, mm. you know, and that's cool, but that shit's not going to win anything. Hop in, hop on the battlefield, and and bring that theory, and let's put it into practice. Right on. Um, just very quickly, this is this. I saw some questions in the chat. Uh, this is one of the books I got. Um, just to try to learn about the game a couple of years ago. It's called Go. Uh, and as the the um, the introduction tells you, uh, for past, possibly the last 4,000 years, Go has enthralled hundreds of millions of people, making the world's most often played game. Go has offered all the people not just the fun and thrills of competition, but most also thought of it as an enhancement of their mental, artistic, and even spiritual lives. There are, there are a number, I would encourage people to watch the documentaries that are out on YouTube and elsewhere. I mean, there's some, it is a fascinating game and um, it's way beyond chess. So if anybody is ever like I have, you know, we were taught, you know, chess to learn to this and this is, this is a, a, a whole new level. Um, and, uh, uh, and it's fascinating. And I like it even because of the symbolic arrangements the look of the board changes so much be based on how people play and it, and, and it's it's infinite so it's like um i, anyway, I haven't yeah. played go but this is one of my favorites right here mancala mancala i don't know that game yeah yeah so game. so it's a it's an african game um and it's um you can have, I mean, you know, they have the, the wood boards, but you can also do like with an egg carton and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We'll play it next time you're down. So, right, so right you can use beads or um, or jewels or whatever. And it's just a, a it, it's another thinking game, but it's uh, dealing with movement. It's an old right on. game. Yeah, yeah. Right on. But yeah, but definitely, um, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if it's cool with you, I got. There's, I've highlighted a couple comments and questions. If you want, we've got to take a couple minutes. If you got a couple minutes, we can run hey, through them. I'm, I'm with it. I got a few minutes before we uh before we dive out. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm gonna have to leave right on time too. I gotta 
get the teeth clean today. Teeth yes, clean yes, today. Yes, 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 Use yes. up that good insurance that I got. Thank God too, man. You know what I mean? You know, anyway. But, but, but definitely shout out to the, the folks who are um checking us out, those who are checking us out now. No doubt. And those who will uh you know catch this uh later. Um I am um you know we're grateful I didn't get to really dig into the chat. You know, I try to been kind of been trying to ignore, you know, so shout out to you. I'm sure that uh we we've had uh different comments along the way. But yeah, anyway, I was trying to peek in and out. I wasn't, you know, trying to lose too, but I, but there were some a couple things uh that I did catch. So I didn't catch any everything obviously, but uh okay. Um, what age would you have your daughters read Fanon? Uh, Kalanji, I don't know about you. I've already tried. Uh, I've already introduced them to Fanon. Uh, even when they were little kids, I created, you know, a little card to give basic facts about them. Uh, I've already given them, they're trying to learn French. So I've already given them Wretched of the Earth in French. Um, right. but it's, but to the point I was making earlier about myself, it's something that has to be reread over and over again as you continue to grow. So I've already introduced them, they're teenagers and, and I'll continue to encourage they be reintroduced to him and, uh, uh, go from there. But yeah, for me, um, I have, uh, one of my sons is heavy into, uh, Fanon, uh, loves the battle of Algiers like me and always coming up with, you know, some new, <clears throat> something that he saw that I didn't see. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. My 15 year old daughter, um, she's just getting into Fanon. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? She's more, um, she's been intrigued by Cabral and Nkrumah. Oh, you know, wow. But, um, Good for you. But, but, but she's definitely, um, you know, getting, hopping up on that, uh, up on the Fanon, uh, piece. And, 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 you know, I noticed that my the same son still has an affinity for for George. You know, so I'm glad that we're moving into George Jackson um I can't as wait. Our, our next next book piece. And that's gonna take place just for the record on uh we're kicking it off on the birthday or around the birthday of Malcolm El Hajj Malik Shabazz. You know, we we promised you all we'd be getting into the whole blood in my eye piece, so we'll definitely be jumping on that um, next month, and we will be joined by Dr. James on that endeavor. So stay tuned, and um, I don't know. I think we we can kind of keep these these this this book momentum going. I think that I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have discussion, and and for folks who you know are checking us out, you know, feel free to leave your comments in the uh, not just the chat, but in the uh, uh, comment section on the film itself, things you agree with, things you disagree with, so on and so forth. You know, we're, we're not claiming to be experts. You know, we're giving our take and um, hopefully it can be appreciated. If not, then, you know. You'll be all right. You, you're always welcome to hop your ass on and give your two cents. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, ZZ Line Dad, for the super chat this morning is line for line is what's going on in Haiti. This is what BBQ fighting for. I tried emailing, texting as many people as I can after watching the documentary, Another Vision Inside Haiti Uprising is parallel. I've not seen that documentary, so thanks for that. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. thanks for the super chat and the constant support. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, and, and good point. Um, oh, we read that one. Emma also suggested that we read uh, Mao's New Democracy on New Democracy. I don't think I've read that. I'm not, I don't think so at least, but um, no doubt. Uh, your, 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 your fellow Connecticutian, did you know that that's how, that's what, you, what your people are called? I just learned that last year, Connecticutians. That, 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 I've never heard that before. You never heard that, that, that one? Be some, that's, that's some white shit. Where we from, we call we, it Bridgeport. Hiram okay. <laughs> we were, we were, we, I was on Yale's campus when I heard that. So maybe that has okay, something so to that, do with it. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I got my name, the riot starter from Yale's campus. There it is. <laughs> so, so yeah, that says a lot, but anyway, but is, anyway, <laughs> we forgive Hiram's, you know, misplaced born, born, you know, geography, you know, right. He, he can't help it. One error is that we no see better. these, <laughs> these institutions, schools, religions, et cetera as operating outside the mode of production, the dominating economic system as opposed to emanating it, reflecting it. I agree. And then Hiram also said something I think is a good point, that these breakdowns of the book would be powerful if they were done while simultaneously holding the Marxism he's speaking of next to it. 
so it doesn't sound like he's making abstract positions. I appreciate that, and I mm-hmm. I like that. That's a good point. Um, and uh, um, I mean, from my humble vantage point, we can always come back and do all of this. Like yeah. this doesn't yeah, have yeah, to be yeah, the yeah. end of our discussion of Fanon. Um, right. And Hiram, I'm always looking to build with you. So anytime you want to join us for that, that'd be great. Yeah, but, and, and 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 I think that you know, again, you know, I, I we welcome uh, criticism and addition because we want to make sure that we are we are bringing our best. And 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 I want to remind folks that this right here, all although it is for non, it is an introduction, and it is an introduction to a number of different people. We have to remind ourselves as well. When you're checking out Black Power Media, there are all types of individuals who are watching. So we have everything from uh, students, high schoolers. Uh, there are folks that I know. Um, I have a, a, a comrade who is a seventh and eighth grade history teacher. They watch our program there. Um, I've talked to a number of different people at different universities. have been checking us out, so on and so forth. Folks on the street. So to many, this is their first introduction and the first time they've been hearing of wretched of the earth or france for now you know so you know we'll 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 grow and move forward and 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 let it do what it do you know there it is uh james not as strong in my 50s doc was still better than average actually still pretty close well yeah well you don't i mean james is i mean we already know like you you i mean you're not an accurate representation of the average post 50 year old. So I don't feel oh, yeah. like we, that's we, fair. We saw, we saw James stunting in the BPM t shirt. You know what I'm saying? Busting that James thing out. Town, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> but hey, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what you, I, I'm, I'm with you, James. I don't know what, what, what ball talking about. My you know bad. What I'm you know, okay, I, my I, bad. I still got the, uh, uh, okay. You know what I mean? So don't get okay. twisted. You know okay. what I mean? Bye, bad. Just fact, me. It's just speaking me. Speaking of that, no, 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 no. I, I ain't going to front. Now, you do. There are elements that come with it. Don't get it twisted. But um, I want to say, too, while we're on that topic, kicking off May 19th, again, Malcolm X Day, going all the way through Black August, we will be kicking off, our organization, FTP Movement, will be kicking off Fitness for Resistance. Now, Fitness for Resistance, what that is, it's the... Um, we will be working on because we again we're always talking theory we're going to be working on physical fitness in different areas uh political education as far as mental fitness uh spiritual fitness whatever however you can get down uh everything from martial arts to running and 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 you know so on and so forth so we invite all of you to hop on board and join us kicking off may 19th uh fitness for resistance you can um we will have websites for you to stay tuned to but it's the opportunity for many of us ar- across the world across the planet to um get into getting our bodies and our minds uh correct you know we want to make sure that we're good because again we're talking all of this stuff we definitely need to make sure that we're in the best of shape and the best of health so fitness for resistance will be kicking off on malcolm x day Anyone can get down. We'll lay it out on on the uh, um, on our various uh, platforms to uh, encourage and and um, assist folks in in supporting their journey. We want to make sure that we're in the best of uh, the best of health, man. That's very important. I don't think that we talk enough about health. Health is kind of looked at as abstract or you know. Like it doesn't really matter. Like we can just talk theory all day and that's cool. So make sure y'all get down with this fitness for resistance uh, kicking off May 19th. Also, if you all have the opportunity, put in the chat some of the things you would like to see on Black Power Media. Um, You know, put a list of uh, books that you think we should break down or films or whatever the case is, events, what have you. It's a number of things coming up, but you know, we're always welcome to, uh, you know, to check out what it is that, uh, you know, we try to deliver. So, you know. Right on. That's very important. Appreciate all of that. Um, one more question that that I had saved for us is is uh, from Strong Flower One. How do we keep the police and military with the mindset that they belong to the people and see themselves as being in service of the elites and the rulers? Uh, in Fanon's chapter here, um, his argument is that 
this is why the youth have to be taken care of and raised because they're going to be the military, they're going to be the police, but they have to be raised that they're doing this in service of the community. So uh, beyond that, I don't have a good answer. Um, yeah. But that was Fanon's point. Yeah, I agree. And I think that um, we have to define and redefine. And I think that um, the first thing is changing the mindset, political education, but in a way that the, the, the keepers of our community aren't considered, aren't called police because police mm -hmm. are that the word police already has a certain connotation. Right. So if anything, um, you know, they might be public safety or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. We have to change the, the, the terms. We have to change the, the, the entire dynamic because we're looking at it. When we hear police, we think about imperialism. We think about those of us who have a degree of consciousness. We think about uh, the states, the military arm of the establishment. We think we're talking about the local military, you know, and when we talk about military, we have to, again, change the name, you know, define, redefine. So folks are clear as to what it is we're doing, you know, and if we don't, then I think it would cause more issues because again, what Fanon was talking about in regards to moving into from a colonialist to a neo-colonialist colonialist state that's where we'll end up we'll still end up pushing the same policies we'll still end up pushing the same uh narrative we'll be saying we need more police and more folks to get gunned down then we'll just it'll be a a, a vicious cycle that that must be broken so everything from the decentralization of police to um uh you know Instituting these public safety uh, departments will, I think, will uh, help us to, you know, get us on the right side of the barricades. Yeah, right on. Well, my man, I appreciate you. It's been another great Monday morning. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go uh, to this black dentist. Okay. Supporting a black dentist and black get my, on black on black. There you get and get my teeth okay. clean. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, be back. Well, I know the remix is coming back all this week, tomorrow morning, starting tomorrow morning. And uh, so folks should make sure that they are liking, sharing, and subscribing. Make sure you got that mm -hmm. bell, get yes. all those bell notifications, because you never know when something's popping up and popping off. And we all got to catch up with everything that's being produced on this platform. So, yes, uh, you know, and uh, anything else I'm forgetting? Anything coming up? Any RSTVs popping up? Speaking of pop-ups, what's, what's, yeah, what yeah, yeah. what's happening? Yeah, we we have some things coming. Um, we have a few good interviews. Um, I'm, I'm I don't want to let the cat out the bag just yet. I'm doing some confirmations. We have uh, some politics. We have some folks who, uh, at least one or two recognized quote unquote entertainers that um, folks would know. Uh, going back to the '80s, um, we have. Uh, Articles that will be dropping uh, in Inquest magazine. Shout out to Inquest, um, Dr. Joy James and I. We have a four-part series that we're doing. The next one is on Michelle McGee um, because we feel that he is, uh, you know, I mean, folks are acting like they forgot. I mean, he's like, literally, this man has been locked up 68 years of his 84 year lifetime. That's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 68 years. He's literally only been out. I don't even want to say free. I would say general population for 16 and a half years of the 84 years that he has been on the planet. And we're walking around talking bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, look out for those articles that will be coming out on Inquest and we'll be doing videos to match here at BPM. Uh, remember next week, put it on your calendars. Let folks know the 69 year birthday of Mumia Abu Jamal. We will be kicking off the week next Monday on GIU 8 a.m. talking about uh, Mumia. Hopefully, you know, he can give us a birthday gift and stop through. You know, you never know. You know, think, but we, don't we, miss we it. Think to think. Yes, so make sure you tap in. Oh yeah, tonight at seven o'clock. Thank you, uh, Quaker Anarchists. Our sisters will be on tonight. And, right. and if you haven't been checking out this show, Daughters of the Whirlwind, 
allow me to tell you that they are children of bona fide freedom fighters. Okay, so I need y'all to understand it. Not that this ain't just three sisters is just talking some nonsense. These are sisters who their parents are in part responsible for a, a, a piece of my political growth. Their mother, who is an ancestor right now, was one of my generals, Ia Fulani Sunni Ali. And if you don't know Fulani Sunni Ali, go get a late pass and go find out about her. And then their fathers being Bilal Sunni Ali and, of course, uh, uh, Baba Ahmed Obafemi, who's now an ancestor as well. But these are true bona fide freedom fighters. Check out this show at 7 p.m. tonight right here on Black Power Media. That's what it's all about. Right on. All right, good people. Kalanji, peace to you. To peace to the sisters who are not here with us working uh, behind the scenes in GIU. Peace to all the people in the remixer community. Uh, only, as Fred Hampton used to say, if you're willing to fight for it. And as we're going to be doing next week, free them all. That's the call. Yeah. So peace, everybody. Catch you next time here at GIU. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.